Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking GPUs and I sold some of mine. I'm going to talk about what I sold, why I sold them, and kind of my overall outlook on GPU mining. This is not a doom and gloom thing either, so don't get it twisted. Just kind of letting you know where my strategy's at, how it's kind of changed a little bit, and what I see going forward, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to this thing. Uh, oh, before we get started, a huge shout out and thank you to all of you, right? Everybody following, everybody liking the videos, everybody subscribing. We just hit another huge milestone. We're at 2,000 subscribers, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, hopefully we all continue to grow. We all continue to get better at this thing, right? This is such a cool, fascinating thing that we're all into, which is mining. It's just crazy, right? Crazy, crazy journey. Hopefully, we all learn from it, we all benefit from it, and that's the overall goal here, right? So again, thank you to you guys, and I also did just hit my 12 months, actually. So just hit a year since I started the channel. It's been great, man. It's been fun. Thank you to all of you guys. We're going to continue going, continue growing, continue doing our thing, and at the end of the day, continue stacking, right? Hardware and coins, we're going to do our thing, right? So, let's get to this thing. So, I did sell a couple of GPUs. And I sold my last big GPUs, right? So it's actually one I bought not too long ago. I did purchase a 4090 back in like March, April. I was able to get an open box one. And I just sold it, right? Ended up selling it. And ended up selling two other 3080s that I had. I am keeping one that's just going to be my GPU or my gaming rig, right? So that one's going to stay here. But what I'm currently mining on is just going to be 3060 Ti's and 3070s that I have left. And my FPGAs, right? So sold them mainly the third the 4090 it was the most excited to sell because number one i was able to sell it for more than i purchased it for right one benefit and i was able to mine on it for six months right on top of that so kind of a win-win right the biggest thing though the biggest thing for me just in general and why i'm even contemplating selling the rest of my gpus is i just don't have enough clarity where the gpu market's going right there's so many things changing and it's exciting. I'm not trying to say that, you know, GPU mining's dead. I'm getting rid of them. I'm out of the game. That's not what it is either, right? It's selling right now to jump in later, right? Once I have more clear direction. Reason I'm saying that is that there's so many coins, so many algorithms, so many factors like proof of useful work coming. It's like, what is going to be more beneficial? So I, should I stock up on other 4090s to take advantage of some vast rigs and proof of useful work? Should I get 3090s while they're cheap? Should I stock up on 3070s because that's what's been the, the go-to? Um, should I jump on AMD cards because by the time the bull market comes, or it's going to be all about Kapow algorithms and like ASIC resistant algorithms, which are more there, or because Dynex pops off. Like it's so hard to really have a clear direction to where I want to go. Right, I do want to stock up on more hardware, but at this point, I'm super torn on where to go. Right, so I do have some ideas going, but realistically, my time frame now, from what I'm thinking, where my strategy is changing, is most likely farther down the road. Right, initially, my jump was going to be able to like for this Black Friday, look for some AMD GPUs, which I may still do. Right, I may still do it just because CPU mining is still looking pretty good. But I want to see how cheap we get on Black Friday for some, especially with the more newer chips, right? I know a lot of you guys are big into like the 3900Xs and stuff. I would be more into looking at like 7900, 7900Xs only because of the resale factor. That's kind of why I like GPU mining and why I would even consider really CPU mining. Because of the fact that there's resale factor, I can CPU mine, I can GPU mine, I can build an AI rig on that consumer grade hardware that once I'm done with it, I can then resell it, right? Similar to the strategy I had with the merge because for most of my gpu rigs when i was still you know mining eth were all gaming pcs so my strategy was turn those rigs into gaming pcs which was pretty much there were already gaming motherboards gaming cards gaming setups throw them in a cheap case and then sell those things and i sold those things for asics right it was pretty much selling a rig for an asic rig for an asic so pretty much using money with hardware that was already paid off and just turning it into something else, right? And that's going to kind of be the game plan here, and that's what I would like to continue to do. But the horizon, instead of it being kind of like I was going to go 50-50 ASICs, 
may potentially just go 100% ASICs again because I have more clarity with the ASICs, right? I do have more a one and a half to two year game plan with these ASICs versus I don't necessarily have that currently with GPUs, right? Because again, I'm, it's hard to say what's really going to be the best bang for the buck, what's really going to pop off until we are in it, until these marketplaces are here, proof of use for work is here, and we see if it's really going to be viable, how viable it's going to be, and then what cards are going to be the best for it, right? Is it going to be NVIDIA's for the AI factor for the CUDA cores? Is it going to be AMD because of Dynex or because of Kapow algorithms? Is it going to be better to stock up on a bunch of 3070s that are more efficient, or should I hop on the 3090s, the 4090s? There's so many variables, right? And I don't want to get stuck with not necessarily old hardware, but hardware that's the most efficient. Like, I want to have a game plan set up and go into it, right? So with GPUs, I don't necessarily have that clarity currently. Hopefully, sometime in the future, I will, and I will continue to go that route. So that doesn't mean, again, I'm quitting GPU mining. I'm getting rid of that stuff. I'm keeping all of my motherboards. I'm keeping all my risers. I'm keeping all my frames. I'm keeping all my power supplies. It's just the cards themselves that I'm kind of torn on, right? Because, again, it's just more clarity there. The other thing to factor in is just the fact that, for example, with the 4090, right? If we break it down and we look at the profitability of that 4090, there's just not a whole lot of money to be had with that card itself considering the cost of that card, right? At $1,500 out of the solid projects, like a lithium is barely break even. You're making two cents profit of 24 hours. And even then, keep in mind, guys, the profitability is in everything. Reality, what you do want to look for, especially if you're hodling, is how much revenue you're generating from that card, right? Especially if you're not going to be selling if you're going to hodl it. So for $1,500, to be accruing $0.80 cents of revenue, or even at the peak, right? Let's say this 2X is 3X is $2, $3 of revenue, when instead I could put that towards an ASIC or buy an ASIC that's in the $2,000, $2,500 range, that's going to generate closer to like $10 a day revenue, right? Just throwing this one for here for an example. Yes, it's only making a buck thirty in profit, which isn't a whole lot. But at the end of the day, the revenue, the yield is what I'm more concerned with right now, right? Because again, my strategy is to hodl for the bull market, right? So it doesn't make a ton of sense to hang on to these cards when I've already have a proven theory, not just a proven theory, but a proven game plan that has been working, right? And that was a big strategy I did when I first started was just switching from GPU mining to the ASICs, right? And it's been working out very good so far, right? I'm able to continually mine. I've been kind of like looking ahead of things and looking at trends. Doesn't mean we're always going to be right or always going to be on point or it's always going to be the best, right? Again, I'm not advocating for you to do this or saying, oh, this is definitely the best way. These are just the trends I'm seeing and what I'm personally looking at and how I'm looking at things, right? But doing it this way, I've been able to continually mine nonstop. Not necessarily GPU mine nonstop, but I've been able to mine in some capacity, right? ASICs have been proven to be a very good choice for me so far. And for a lot of others, in case you haven't noticed, there's been a ton of other people going in there, a lot of content creators that have done that shift, right? And that was the start of my channel. That's pretty much when I started, and that was my game plan from the get-go, right? And so far, it's been very good, and so far... Even right now, it looks like it's going to continue to be good, right? At least that way I have clarity for that plan where I feel confident in investing X amount of money into like another unit and being able to have that game plan for a year and a half confidently, right? Again, that doesn't mean it's going to pan out. That doesn't mean it's not going to go be worthless or that Bitmain is going to, for example, with the K3 next week, dump 10,000 units on the market for $1,000 a pop, right? That's also definitely a possibility. Probably can go to negatives real quick. Right, a lot of variables, a lot of factors. Is that super likely though? Not really, right? But is it possible? Sure, these are things you gotta factor in. You gotta see the likelihood of things, do your research, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna go super into depth because otherwise we'll be here for two hours, right? This is actually my second attempt at recording. The first one I was already at 45 minutes and didn't even get to any of the points, right? So again, the main things, GPU mining, so many variables, so many things that we don't know where to go at least for me personally, right? Again, I am kind of looking into dabbling into picking up some, maybe some other boards if they're super cheap this Black Friday, maybe some 7900s, things of that sort, more current trends. So that way, even a year down the road, it's still going to be fairly easy to sell if, you know, sell it as a gaming PC or something of that sort, right? Which was my strategy last year. A majority of the gaming rigs I sold were with old 
And I say old, but at that point, they were like a year and a half old, right? The 5600Xs were already out. But most of the ones I sold had 3600Xs in them. So at that point, it's still relevant. You still have a good card. You're able to make good resale from that, right? And that's kind of where my eye is at because that's, again, that's the biggest benefit with GPU mining versus ASIC mining is do you have that resale factor? Another good example is, again, we're a year out of the merge and the GPU prices are still about the same range, right? Which is pretty insane. I did not really expect to see this happening. If we go by previous cycles and what's happened in the past, these things should be already like 50 to 100 bucks, right? But so far it has not been the case and it's probably not going to be the case. Reason being is that what's going to be different in this gen, I believe, is that a lot of these cards are still going to be relevant because of the continuation of NVIDIA continuing to nerf these next generation cards. Okay, we've seen it already. The 3000 series, like the 3080s, the 3090s, even the 3070s, the memory bus bandwidth is so much greater than it is with these 4000 series cards. And I think that's going to be a trend that continues. For, so for the algorithms that take advantage of that, these cards may actually still be more relevant. They may not be as efficient, right? We've seen like the cream of the crop with the 4000 series is actually the 4070 Ti, right? Because it's the closest one that kind of like finds that balance. But in the bull market, when revenue and hash rate is going to be king, these guys are actually a bit better, right? In some cases, a lot better, right? Because again... Where these things lack, though, are like the core intensive algorithms, but most likely, again, come the bull market, I'm trying to like foresee things, a lot of those algorithms are going to be gone. RxD will most likely be ASIC already, same with Elephium. Nexa will probably already be ASIC at that point as well, right? So these are things to kind of factor in, and that's kind of what I'm looking at, right? So again, the 3060 Ti's and the, these have gone down slightly, right? Certain ones have gone down a bit more than others. Last year, it, was, it had been hovering in a 300 range. Currently, now it's in the 240 to 50 range, right? 3070s are 270 to 300. 3090s have been on a slight uptick, actually. And I think it's because of the anticipation for proof of use for work, for these vast AI rigs, for machine learning, for that hobbyist, right? That 24 gigs of VRAM is what's enticing people. So these things are currently still in the $700 range, right? These things were dipping into the 550, 600 range. Now, consistently, they're 700 plus and most likely potentially going to continue to go up, right? Because if you want 24 gigs of VRAM with CUDA cores, it's an NVIDIA. This is your cheapest entry into that point, right? Especially in comparison with like the 4090, which is now a year later, right? It's been out for a year. Even in the used market, it is selling for as much as it is brand new, right? There's only like a 10% discount for buying this thing used, right? Which is pretty insane. But it was beneficial for me, right? Luckily, there was no 4090 Ti, as we had most likely kind of were expecting, but it looks like that's not going to be the case, at least for this holiday season, right? So something to think about there. And these things may start getting a little bit sparse, right? We all know where NVIDIA is heading, and it's into AI and into enterprise-level cards, right? And this is kind of... This is kind of why I foresee the market going. I don't necessarily see a GPU shortage, but I don't think they're going to manufacture as many cards to kind of keep the hype level up, right? So as we've already seen, right? So one thing that came out today is a 4080 Ti incoming, potentially the first half of 24, hopefully with 20 gigs of VRAM. The thing to consider here, though, is this is kind of what we were talking about in the last video I did about GPU mining. Most likely, the refresh for the 4000 series is most likely to be very basic, very minimal, and most likely just a VRAM upgrade. Most likely, instead of having, you know, 12 gigs, 16 gigs, it'll be 20, potentially higher, potentially that much gigs of VRAM, right? That's going to be, I think, the biggest thing. That was the biggest critique with them overall, especially in comparison with the AMDs, is just the lack of VRAM. Most likely, that's going to be what that refresh is going to be. So I wouldn't expect anything fantastic out of these, either whether they're TIs or supers, whatever they're going to call them, whatever comes out this spring, summer, expect that to be the case, right? We won't see that significant upgrade until we get the 5000 series, which is so far second half of 2024, potentially Q3, Q4, 2024. But keep in mind the timeline, right? What's also going to happen around that time frame? If crypto starts popping off, that's going to be the timeline when it does. And then guess what's going to happen if it does take off? those things are going to skyrocket in price, right? 
So these are the kind of things you got to factor in, you got to think about as well, right? The other thing we know, and the other reason I'm saying is that it's probably going to be sp sparse, is that NVIDIA, we know 100% is going full-blown on their enterprise-level GPUs just because where that's where the money's at, right? I've referenced this article before. They have a 1,000% profit on H100s. And they literally just cannot make enough of these things. They cannot make these things fast enough. And that's going to be the case for years to come, right? So that's another thing to factor in. Another hint that they're giving us, which again, they've been giving these crumbs all year, actually. If you pay attention to a lot of the articles, it's literally over and over again, they've been feeding these crumbs that that's where they're going, right? That's why it's been such a big emphasis on DLSS. And they've been telling us this, right? Here's another article. NVIDIA says native resolution gaming is out. DLSS is here to stay, right? So this is their... VP of Applied Deep Learning Research stated that native resolution gaming is no longer the best solution for maximum graphical fidelity. Catanzaro went on to say that the gaming graphics industry is headed towards more significant reliance on AI image reconstruction and AI-based graphics rendering in the future. So again, the emphasis, instead of it being hardware upgrades, more VRAM, higher clocks, better chips, which they're still going to do, but it's going to be lazier upgrades. A lot of the focus is going to be on DLSS. That is going to be a big thing. And that's actually what this article was talking about. And it was talking about with this, this update with Cyberpunk. How essentially they were able to maximize the graphic fidelity through DLSS. Through these techniques versus actual hardware. That currently the current hardware wouldn't be able to do this natively. Right? That would, But through this AI rendering, which is DLSS, right? It's just the fancy name for it. They are able to do that, right? Which is why I continue to think that even this 5000 series is going to follow the same thing. Yes, you're going to have like the 5090 or the Titan, whatever they want to call it. There is going to be one top-notch unlimited card, right? But I think most of the consumer grade cards, your 5070, your 5080, 5060 Ti, etc., etc., aren't going to be the massive upgrades we're hoping for. Will they be GDR7? Yes, some of them, especially the higher-end ones. But a lot of them are going to probably be constrained. It's going to be very similar, I think, to this current gen, right? They're going to be definite upgrades. They're going to be going. They're going to be better. They're going to be more efficient. But for us who are mining, we want that power. We want that memory bus bandwidth. We want that VRAM. We want those higher... We want a beefy card. And I don't think we're going to get that. I think also that's a big reason why we're not going to see these... $50 30 70s, right? The 3000 series cards, in my opinion, if those, you know, typical projects take off, your car, your not Cardano's, your Ergo's, your Fluxes, your Ravencoin, like all of those, those cards are going to be the best for that still. They're not going to be as efficient, right? If we look at the profitability things, they're not as efficient, but overall, they do make more hash, right? Which in the bull market, that's kind of what we want. We don't want it to be extreme either, right? But we do want it to be relevant. I think that's going to be the case. It's not going to be like the previous gen where like the 3000 series blew everything else out of the water. We're not going to have that this cycle. Maybe again with that top end card, that 5090. But I don't think that's going to be the case with the consumer grade cards. Okay, so I think that's why. Yes, at the same time, it's like, oh man, well, you're selling your cards at the low. Yes, but it's with the anticipation of buying ASICs that are an even better bargain than what they were last year, right? And that's kind of where my mind frame is also. Like I just mentioned right now, a lot of these cards are still in that same price range from last year. But what is massively different is that these ASICs are way cheaper than they were last year, right? So that's why I'm going to most likely transition that money into there. I may not. I may end up just using it to buy if we have a bigger dip. But the, at the end of the day, it's to stack more coins, right? I'm going to be able to stack more revenue, stack more coins, stack more hardware with that money versus I would here, right? Again, I just have more clarity, more confidence in the ASIC market currently. Again, I have more of a direction. Like I feel more comfortable investing $4,000 if I have it available towards an ASIC than I do trying to invest $4,000 into GPUs. Like I would really have no idea. I would... Probably get a couple of 4090s, some 3090s. Like, I wouldn't have full clarity to be like, you know what? 3070s are going to be the deal. Buying $4,000 with, the, like, I don't have that clarity with that, that confidence with that, as I do with the ASICs currently, right? Maybe a year later, 
I do, and maybe that's when I flip those ASICs into GPUs, right? It's it's all going to be a flipping game. I'm going to keep my eyes on everything, but currently from what I'm seeing, running the numbers, looking at things, looking at future trends, that's how I see things, right? And that's why I'm such a big proponent on you researching these things, you taking people's inputs, but at the end of the day, you making your decision. Where does your gut say we're going? What do you see? Right, especially if you're a gamer, if you look at these trends, if you look at what people think of gaming cards, like where do you see things going? Take people's input, take an input from here, take an input from there, and come up with your own conclusion so you can come up with your own game plan. Right, so far that has been an excellent strategy for me, kind of predicting where the market's going. Right, and that has been working beautifully. Right, we saw this past year, jumped it to A6 at the beginning of the year, and it's been beautiful. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to go 100% A6. Or mostly, right? I still have those FPGAs, but very good chance that I'm going to end up dumping even my 3060 Ti's and 3070s here pretty soon with the anticipation of cheaper ASIC pricing, right? As it looks like it may be coming, right? Especially right now with a lot of sales incoming. We do have Black Friday, which, yes, even for everything, people do sales for that. It is a big time where people are ready to spend money, right? And people know this, even like the ASIC stores, a lot of them do run deals during that time. And there's going to be a lot of things they want to clearance out, especially like Bitcoin miners, things of that sort. They want to start clearing that inventory for these new miners coming in, right? So you got to factor those things. Think about those things. Where do you see those trends going? And for me, just with GPU mining, again, I'm not saying it's dead. I'm not saying it's over. It's going to come back. We're going to do our thing. There's still a lot of these coins who are going to be profitable. They're going to be here. They're going to be very relevant. Proof of use for work will hopefully start to take off. But again, once I have more clarity, more confidence, then I can be more confident in buying what I need to buy, right? Because certain things are kind of there. They're kind of like appealing. Like a lot of these, a lot, of, a lot of people are getting to like Epic Rigs and they're buying these old workstations. It's like for me, that's not like where my strategy lies, right? I like being able to buy things that are more recent and have more resale value, right? I'm going to struggle a lot more to sell this four-year-old workstation than I am buying a 7900X rig. Right. Those are the kinds of things that I kind of like go through, like, OK, look at my risk versus reward. OK, let's say I do this. This mining flops or whatever flops. What is my resale? Like, what is my upside? OK, well, at the end of the day, I probably won't lose a whole lot because I throw it into a gaming PC. And I'm probably going to be able to make money off of it, if not break even. Right. So those are the kinds of like things I try to look for. Right. Because at that point, you're able to mitigate your risk a little bit. Right. And at least for me, that's a big thing. Like I like having the the opportunity for resale. That to me is a lot of where the value proposition is with mining for at least for me, for my strategy. Again, you got to come up with your own thing. Some people, they do not care. They'll buy whatever because their strategy is to mine that thing into the ground until that thing doesn't power anymore. They're going to run it all the way through. They have no intention of selling. And that's fine, too. Right. Everybody, again, has their strategy has their way of seeing things, has their viewpoints of things. But you have to come up with your own and see what makes sense to you. This is what makes sense to me, right? So again, I'm not trying to FUD anything, not trying to start anything, just letting you know what my strategy is and how it's probably going to be shifting all the way to ASICs, right? So let me know in the comments, guys. What are you guys thinking? Are you guys kind of in the same boat? Are you guys still struggling? I know a lot of you guys freaking have like 100 plus GPUs. You guys are nuts and you guys have just been sitting there unplugged. It's like you have to think that that's a lot of lost revenue. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to think about these things, right? Like we don't know where things are going. Maybe things pop off, but who knows? Maybe two weeks from now we have our next Caspa and there we go. And it stays GPU money. Who knows, right? Tons of factors, but you got to think about these things. You got to think about the future, right? To me, that's the biggest thing. And that's what's helped me out throughout this entire past year. And that's one of the biggest things I have learned is to look at future trends. Go with your gut. Don't go with the hot thing on YouTube. Don't go with the hot thing with these info. Don't go with that. Go with your gut. Go with what tells you, right? That's what told me to buy Flux when I did, buy Radiant when I did, buy those FPGAs when I did go into ASICs when I did, it's going against the narrative because zooming out, taking other things into perspective, running numbers, and see what makes sense to you, right? That way you can take advantage of this market. There's not a lot of people are like doom and gloom about everything, but dude, this is opportunity. Freaking brand new Bitcoin ASICs that are a thousand bucks. Being able to buy with under 3K 
any altcoin miner you can think of, right? Including cash spaces. We just saw this huge ice river downturn. It's crazy. There's so much opportunity here, right? Cheap coins, cheap hardware, but it's up to you to decide which route to go, which route to take, right? There is no wrong or white way to do this either, right? There's only your way, right? Some people just want to go straight into this, straight into that. There's no wrong way. Who knows, right? This is the beauty in all of this, that it's a lot of like theory craft. It's a lot of you coming up with your game plan, seeing what works, right? This is the the fascinating part for me is that there's no like real guide to this, right? Everything is still so new, especially all this AI stuff. Like we're all in the beginning stages of this, right? That's what makes all of this so fascinating. That's why I'm here. So I'm here to help you guys out. I'm here to help myself out, right? Not just you guys. I've learned it so much from you guys as well, right? Again, this is like a community thing. So I encourage you guys to please comment on there, ask questions, get feedback. Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Because sometimes when you guys ask that, it kind of opens my mind. Like I'll respond to him, but like, oh, you know what? I didn't really kind of think about that. That's true. That's a good point. And that's the purpose of all these videos, right? Try to give you different ideas. Think about things. So comment, guys. Throw ideas out there. Whatever it is, right? There's no Again, there's no wrong or right thing. It's just your thing, right? So let me know, guys, in the comments what y'all thinking of doing. Again, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys. And I am out.